Hey everybody. Well, I pray y'all been blessed and y'all staying with us. And oh my goodness, we've all been listening to the news and how, how much it's just in a mess all around the world. <laughs> oh my goodness. What are we going to do? And it just keeps getting worse and worse. With all these things we just keep seeing and the, the things we see on the television and how they're just t turning filth into entertainment in front of the kids and your grandmother. And people just love their free rack to do as they please. Well, it's going to cost them in the end. Oh my goodness. I wanted to bring you a story about, that I kind of created from a lot of stories that my dad told when I was a kid growing up in his ministry. He put a lot of stories into his sermons and to try to bring some impact into life and into the teaching of the Bible. And trying to remember all those stories and putting them together. He had some of the coolest stories that just really got everybody's attention. And from those stories, I, I was, I put together a story out of those stories because I couldn't remember all of the details that he brought in each and every story. So I kind of took a piece of, of several stories that he brought and made it into a, its own story of what I thought would be impressive to the people and maybe try to help them in life, especially in the times we're having in our day and time. It's just a mess. But all we can do is say our prayers and say, Lord, come quickly. <laughs> Get us out of here. Uh, you know, is there any way you can speed up the time? We know you, the Father set the day and hour. But, Lord, is there any way you can kind of speed it up a little bit and just get us on out of here and bring us to the kingdom? Well, he set that time, and he's evidently going to keep it. So all we can do is wait and see. If we get to wake up the next morning, if you have to go to work, try not to be late. You know, they'll put a check mark on you on there. Uh, you was late, you know, so try not to be late. You got to go to work. But you take care of your family and do all you can. That's all we can do until it comes time. I wanted to bring you this story <laughs> that I've put together from a bunch of stories of dads. And, and I think it come out pretty good. I've done a lot of audio recordings of it. And I've done it in typing and writing it into a story. But I'm not a writer. You know, I'm just that's not a speller. I'm a, you know, I'm a speaker. And I pray you all enjoy it. And may it touch your heart. It's got to really impact all the way to its end. And it's a story about a grandpa taking his grandson fishing and teaching him a little bit about life as life is. And you see, there was this grandfather. He, he didn't get to spend much time with his own grandson. You know, it's... The grandson lived in town and with the family. And Grandpa, he was out there on the farm with his, with his wife. And the kids, they just loved to go out to the farm and, you know, look at, watch the horses run and the cattle and the great big farm and the chickens. And they just have the best time every time they go out and see Grandma and Grandpa out there at the farm. And there was a time that the grandson, he wanted to spend a little time with his own grandfather and have a little bit of special time. And so he asked Grandpa, he said, Grandpa, will you take me fishing? I'd sure like to learn how to fish. Grandpa, they say you're the best fisherman there is. And Grandpa, I just want to spend some time out there on the farm. So all the grandparents, they picked up their grandson. And they took him out to the farm, and they spent the night. Grandpa, he had a special pond all the way, way out there in the back that he always kept stocked all the, all the time. He said, oh, this might be a good day to take my grandson fishing. Oh, if this ain't going to be something to finally spend a little time with my own grandson and teach him how to fish. I wonder if we can catch some good ones. It ought to be a good time of the year. So they hopped in the old pickup truck 
and they took off across the farm and went all the way out there to the wee pond way out there in the back. Grandpa had him an old fishing log that he'd set up where he'd like to sit and just enjoy the day in fishing in peace and quiet and thinking. Oh, he was just ever so happy to see his own grandson to be there with him. And that grandson, he said, but Grandpa, I, I, I don't know how to bait the hook. And he said, I'll show you. I'll show you. You just hang on. Well, wait a minute. We're going to need some more worms. Let me show you an old trick or two that I learned. Bring that old tube before out of the back of the truck and come on over here by this old tree that's over here by the bank of the, of the pond. I'm going to show you a little trick or two. Take that old tube before us grandson and just keep swatting the ground with it and swat the ground with it and watch what happens. You see how it's real moist around the bottom of the tree of this trunk and the ground's real wet with some of the dew. Take that old tube before just keep swatting the ground and swatting the ground. And he said, Grandpa, why am I doing this? He said, you'll see. And then he got to looking down there in the ground and there's night crawlers just coming up out of the ground. Oh, about that long. And he just going, look at that, Grandpa, look at that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You see that vibration of the ground? and swatting the ground. You see, this way the good Lord provides for free. This way we don't have to go back in town and, you know, try to spend all of our money. And, of course, the gas to get back up in there. We can get it right out here, out of, out of the farm. The good Lord's provided for free. Would you look at that? Pick them up and put them in that old coffee can. Put a little dirt in it. And let's see if we can do some fishing today. Oh, we're going to have a good time. Just enjoying the day. So they went back over to that old tree log. and Grandpa showed him how to bait the hook. And how to cast the, the line way out there. Put a little bobber on it. Sick of this bobble in the pond. He said, now you watch that bobber. And we'll just see what happens. We'll wait a little bit, and if nothing really happens, then we'll take that bobber off, and we'll go fishing off the bottom. And just let her go kaplop. <laughs> oh, grandson, he was just so tickled and so happy to be with his own grandfather. Just to spend some time with him. But Grandpa noticed something. While well, they was waiting on the bobber, that grandson, he'd take a little New Testament out of his pocket and he'd go to reading it just a little bit and looking up at that Bible. And he'd try to read a little bit and he'd shake his head and put it back in his pocket. And he'd watch that Bible. Grandpa said, what you doing, grandson? What you got there? Well... Grandma gave me this little Bible up here, in Sun up here in Sunday school. And she told me if I could just learn how to read this Bible, that I could learn how to grow and be strong in the Lord. But Grandpa, it's just, just in such a strong speech. You know, thine will be done and all of that. Grandpa, I just don't understand the word that they be using. It's just in such strong speech. My grandpa, he said, aha, now it's going to be a good day. Lord, grant this family the feast that thou hast given us to eat. Lord, we pray for such a good day in catching the fish. But Lord, I thank you for the time that you've given me to spend with my grandson. And now maybe we can sit and talk. A little bit about that word. Your Bible, Lord. Lord, it's in strong speech. But maybe we can help him here a little bit today. While we spend a little bit of time. Trying to catch some fish. Out of that pond. Grandpa said, now you watch that barber. If you see it, go wonder. You just give it a little yank. I'll show you. You just see. But he said, Grandson, 
I understand what you mean. That that little Bible that it's in strong speech. It sure is. Well, that's the way they kind of wrote it up back then to kind of help out the King James. Well, they kind of spoke that way. So the ones who translated it, they wanted to try to keep it in a king's land's way of speaking and put it in their way of speaking. And I got to admit, it takes a lot of learning sometimes to learn all those words and, and how it's been spoken. But grandson, when you hear those stories be put into a story, it's not so hard to understand. It's just learning how to understand when you hear the words. And he said, what do you mean, Grandpa? He said, well, let me tell you a little story about what happened long time ago. Right down that very road right over there. You see right over there that gravel road? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, you see, long time ago, grandson, there were some old farmers that lived way, way back over there, and they stayed to themselves. They didn't bother nobody. They stayed to themselves, and they took care of their own farm and their own family and their children. And they were good people. Oh, they loved the Lord. And they just didn't bother anybody. But you know, one time in the night, there came a thief in the night. Oh, a real thief. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, there came a real thief in the night. Well, this thief, he decided he was just going to do what he always did best. He knew how to steal. Well, he got to watching that old farm over there. Didn't see any lights on in the house and didn't see any but he come riding by and he got to thinking nobody was home so he sat out there in the night and he went to watch in that old house he even snuck out there into the barn only horses in the barn there ain't nobody home but there was oh no grandpa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well he didn't know that and here that thief, he broke into a window. And he climbed in through the living room with a gunny sack. Oh, no, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he sure did. And he was loading up that man's positions and getting anything he could get in that old gunny sack. But when he broke the window, there was... The farmers was, was asleep upstairs. Oh, no, Grandpa, no. Uh-huh. You wait and see. The woman of the house, she's trying to wake up the old man who was sound asleep. He didn't hear the break. He had bad ears. And she kept saying, husband, husband, arise. Someone has broken into our house. Husband, arise. Well, he woke up startled and grabbed his old shotgun and grabbed him a lantern. And he coming down those stairs with a thief. He, he noticed the lights coming down the stairs. Well, he tried to hide behind the old couch. And he dove down in behind hoping nobody would see him. But the man noticed a window in the living room was broke, and he heard a sound. And here's what he did, grandson. He raised that double barrel shotgun up as he set the lantern down. And he said, neighbor, why hast thou was broken into mine house? Neighbor, if thou was doesn't move and leave, Thou was just standing where I am about to shoot. You best leave mine house. Well, he was startled. But as he was kneeling down behind the couch, he seen a book on the coffee table, and he stuffed it into his coat pocket. 
and here's that neighbor, that farmer. He said, you best get out of mine house. I'm going to shoot if thou dost not leave mine house. He drove out the wind, leaving the old gunny sack. And he ran and he ran and he ran as hard as he could run. Oh, Grandpa, it's a wonder he didn't get shot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you see, that old farmer, he didn't want to shoot him. He just wanted to really get his attention. He didn't want to shoot him if he didn't have to. But he broke into the man's house. Well, they got up that next morning. Grandma fixed breakfast and Grandpa went into town. He went looking around, asking around, and has anybody seen this fella? He seems to be new in town. Nobody seemed to know who he was. Well, Grandpa, he come back to the farm. Always wondering, now who in the world was that? To be brave enough to break into our house. Nobody would seen him. And that evening, as they were sitting down at the dinner table, they heard a knock on the door. And as the man and the, the woman came to the door, wondering who it might be, and it was the thief. Oh, Grandpa. Well, was he crazy to go back to that man's house? Was he crazy? Oh, now wait a minute, grandson. Wait a minute. Wait and see. Well, as the, the farmer opens the door, and it startled him because there he be. And he said, Neighbor, why hast thou was returned unto mine house? Why would you come back unto mine house? And the man was trembling and shaking. And he said, Sir, I've come to return your book. My book? Yes, sir. I come to return your Bible. What? Why hast thou stolen my Bible? Well, you see, sir, I, I'm a thief betrayed. And I've lived that way for the longest time. But I also love to read books. And the whole time I've been hiding and even trying to read this very book. And I can no longer hold it in my hands without shaking. And I must return your book. And I'm very sorry for breaking into your house. And the neighbor said, what? You've been reading my Bible, and you wish to return it? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I took your Bible. But, sir, would you teach me about this man you call Jesus? Would you teach me about him? There's something about him that I want to know. They couldn't believe their ears. And Grandma, as she began singing a little song, and she's got tears in her hands in the air, Grandpa led that thief to the Lord. And he said, neighbor, you can keep my book. I now give it unto thee. And if there's anything in this book that you do not understand, you come and you sit with me. And I'll do everything to teach you what I know. Well, the man went off about his own way. Oh, careful. 
Wow. And he said, Grandson, is there anything about that story you just didn't understand what was going on? Oh, no, Grandpa, I understood plainly. If that man didn't move and get out of that man's house, he was going to get shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, he probably he was going to get shot that day. But thank the good Lord, the man used his head. And the, the thief took off the other way. But you see how it turned out, son? That even somebody who's making mistakes their whole life, that they can finally turn their life around. If they just finally find someone who will take the time to help them out. And he said, Grandpa, oh, I caught a fish, I caught a fish, my barber, Grandpa, my barber. And he just went down, under and down there, Grandpa's trying to help him. Hold on, easy, easy, really, man, oh, oh, there you go, easy, easy, there we go. Oh, my goodness, you got a big, it. oh, you, you, oh, Lord, will you look at that, glory, Lord, did look at that. My grandson caught him a fish right out here in the pond. Oh, easy, there we go, there we go. Oh, would you look at that. And he just, every grandson, just a smiling and a grabbing and smiling at Grandpa. Oh, would you look at that, Grandpa? Ain't he a bigot? Ain't he a bigot? Oh, uh, can we catch another? Can we catch another one? Well, let, let, well hold on. We got to get him on the stringer. Hold on. Put him on just like this. And let's put him back in the pond and stick that stringer so he won't get off. But let's try something. Let's see if we can get some off the bottom. So let's take that little barber off. Let's see if we can just throw it out as far as we can and just wait and see. And feel that line. Until it nibbles. Oops. And then you give her a yank. And we'll get some. You'll see. Oh, they was having the best of time. Fishing with his own grandfather. Grandfather, he just smiling with his heart. He just doesn't know how to be and how to act. Having the best of time with his own grandson. And now they're catching fish and they're catching one and they're catching another. And they got to notice that the sun was fixing to go down. And Grandma said the plates would be on the table about sundown. You best all get back here and get your hands washed. Well, that sun was fixing to go down and they had that whole stringer plumb full of fish. Grandson, he just a waving. He said, but Grandpa, I don't know how to clean the fish. He said, I'll show you. I, I, I'll show you. But here's what we're going to do, Grandson. You see that great, the biggest, great, big catfish that we got there on the stringer? We're going to put him back. And and then we're going to get two or three of those little, those little cats. Now, let's put them back into the pond. Be careful that they don't sting you now. You know, if you get stung, run, you rub your hand on the, on the belly of that old fish, and you know that sting going to go away? Yeah, you will. But let's take a couple of those little youngins, and let's put them back there out there in the pond. He said, you see, grandson, even granddaddy cat needs to have time to, 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 to be with his own grandchildren. That way he can teach them how to grow and how to survive. So we're going to take the granddaddy, and we're going to put him back in the pond, and we're going to take some of those youngins back there. Them, them little ones, and we're going to stick them back in the pond. And I'll show you how to clean these fish. Because even Granddaddy Cat needs time to teach his own grandchildren how to survive in the pond. <laughs> oh, grandson, he was, he was just ever so happy. He on the back of the truck. Cleaning out that old, cleaning the fish. Grandpa showed him how to start filleting the fish and, and how to skin it. Grandpa said, oh, I left my pole over there by the pond, by, by the pond by, on, on the log. I, I'll be right back, grandson. I left my, left my pole over there. Grandpa, he was headed over there to the pond and, to pick up his, his fishing pole and bring it back. Grandson, he just doing like Grandpa was showing him and putting him off into the cooler. And looking back at Grandpa, when he turned around, Grandpa had fallen to his knees and holding his heart. The grandchild son, he, he's going, Grandpa, Grandpa. And he dropped everything he had in his hands and he ran and he ran and he ran.
to get to his own grandson, grandfather, because he's holding his heart and he's got tears coming down his eyes and he's on his knees. And he's hollering, Grandpa, is it your heart, Grandpa? Is it your heart? I, I go get Grandma. I, I, I'll take the truck and I, I go get Grandma. No, grandson, no, it's, it's all right. I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Grandson, kneel down. I, I got something to tell you, grandson. And it's not easy to say. Well, well, what is it, Grandpa? What is it? You you can tell me. What, what, why are you crying, Grandpa? Grandpa reached down and put his hands upon that young lad's shoulders. And he said, Grandson, do you remember the thief that was in that story that I told you all about? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Grandson, that thief was me. What? It, it, it was you. You, you was the thief. Uh huh. It was me, grandson. And I'd done everything from that time on to change my life around. And I sat down with that old man and had him to teach me a lot about the Bible. I even married that man's daughter. That's Grandma. I married her daughter, the most precious woman that's ever been in my life, your Grandma. But Grandson the Thief was me. Oh, Grandpa. Oh. Wow. What a story, Grandpa. Well, yeah. That wasn't easy to do. To take your own grandson. But I wanted you to know. The boy, he helped Grandpa up off the ground and they began walking back to the truck. In all. And he said, Grandpa, what if a man was to say, take something and he can't return it? What, what does he do then, Grandpa? What? What did you do, Grandson? Um, he was a candy bar. And I ate it. You ate it? Yeah. Mom said it's going to be a while before supper. And I snuck me a candy bar from the store. You did what? Now, you know better than that. I know. But what do I do now, Grandpa? I can't return it. Well, let me think a minute. Oh, I know. Let's see here. You know, when we go to church come Sunday morning, I'll tell you what I want you to do. You see this little dollar? I'm going to give you a little dollar here now. I want you to, to put that into the offering plate. When we go to church, and I want you to say a little prayer. Lord, forgive me for taking that candy bar. And, and Lord, will you forgive me? And say, Lord, will you help get this money back to those people. And the grandson, he did that. You see, the store that he took the candy bar from was gone. It was no longer there. 
or grandpa could have taken him up to the store and said, we are sorry. Can we replace and make it right? But the store was no longer there. So grandpa came up with what he told the boy to do. And the grandson did that. He done everything his grandfather told him to do. So you see guys, I wanted to kind of bring this little story and come around a little different than what I've done in recordings and in the writings because it's been about 10 years since I even done the story. But may that story touch your heart. And may it speak to your own hearts. That we're grown up now remembering the things we, we've done even in our own lives. We've learned by our own mistakes and our own hardships in our own hard times. May the Lord bless you and may you, He smile upon you and may you all be blessed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you.